Welcome back to Harbour Unbox. Today we're doing a video that hasn't been heavily requested. I think one or two people have mentioned it and I had to think about it, a bit of a look at it. I'm like, yeah, it's kind of interesting. We'll make a video out of it. So as I'm sure most of you know, AMD developed their Wraith Spire cooler, uh, the, the new Wraith Spire box cooler, and that was released first with the Ryzen 5 1600. So yeah, it was a big upgrade from what we were used to getting with sort of mid-range processors from Intel, I suppose. And it was a very good cooler that was then carried on and used with the Ryzen 5 2600X. And then of course, the most recent recipient of the Wraith Spire is the Ryzen 5 3600X. And this is that very cooler here. And if we look at it, it's very similar to the one I already had from my first and second gen Ryzen parts. And yeah, at first glance, I think it's fair to say they do look very much the same, but not all Wraith Spires are created equally. Here is the first and second gen one, and here is the third gen one. Or I suppose this is the first generation, this is the second generation, but you know what I mean? This came with the first and second gen Ryzen CPUs. This one came with the third gen Ryzen CPUs, or one of them, and it doesn't have a copper insert. It's missing, it's all aluminium. So it seems AMD has cheaped out on us a bit here. So ditching the copper vapor chamber for an all aluminium heatsink. And when I was testing the 3600X, I noticed that the fan was quite a bit louder than what I was used to for the, the Wraith Spire uh, compared to say the 2600X. And I thought that's interesting because this fan spinning flat out isn't very loud. Whereas yeah, this one was quite noticeable. So I pulled the fans off and sure enough, they've also changed the fan. Uh, they physically look the same, but spec wise, they are different. Whereas the previous model peaked at just 2,800 RPM, the new model spins at about 3,500 RPM, and that makes it noticeably noisier. So it seems this is a result of making a less efficient heatsink. In order to keep temperatures in check, the fan needs to spin much faster. Now, it's not ridiculously loud, but when compared to the previous model, which really couldn't be heard inside even a quiet computer case, the new non-copper version certainly can be heard when the CPU is under quite a bit of load. Other than the removal of the copper vapor chamber, the heat sinks are physically identical, but of course there is quite a difference in weight. It might surprise you to learn that the new version is almost 20% heavier. Although copper is heavier than aluminium, there is very little copper in the previous model as it's not a copper solid slug, but rather a hollow vapor chamber. So whereas the old copper model tipped the scales at 365 grams, the new model weighs 436 grams. And you can really notice that extra weight when you pick them up unsurprisingly. For those of you wondering, because I know there will be someone that asked this question, the Intel box cooler weighs just 168 grams, heatsink and all. So that just goes to show how much AMD is still giving us with these Wraith Spire coolers. And of course the Intel box cooler is solid aluminium as well. Now with the fans removed, the newer model is almost 30% heavier as the copper version fan was nine grams heavier. The original fan was also made by Cooler Master. It was 92 millimeters in diameter and 25 millimeters thick. Cooler Master's actually responsible for the production of all AMD box coolers, and the same 92 millimeter fan can be found on Cooler Master's Master Liquid Maker 92. It's rated for up to 2600 RPM, but was reported to spin at 2800 RPM on our Gigabyte X570 Aorus Extreme motherboard. It has a hydraulic bearing fan with a four pin plug for PWM temperature control. The new fan is again a 92 by 25 millimeter model, but this time it's made by Foxconn and it's a servo grade brushless fan, but I wasn't able to find the official RPM range, but we know it's spun at around 3500 RPM in our load test. The fan weighs 89 grams, whereas the previous model weighed 98 grams. So I think that's enough talk about the coolers themselves. Let's throw these guys on the Ryzen 5 3600 and see how they compare. With the fans left on auto to do their own thing, we see the new Wraith Spire allows the 3600X to run at pretty much the same temperature as the previous copper model. Of course, the fan speed has been increased by around 700 RPM in order for that to be possible. So when it comes to out of the box temperatures, very little has changed, but that is of course at the expense of your eardrums. Now, if we take the faster fan off the aluminum Spire and stick on the 2800 RPM version from the original Spire, we see just how hot the new model will run with the quieter fan. Basically, the 3600X would run four degrees hotter in a 21 degree room, five degrees hotter with PBO enabled. 
Interestingly, sticking the loud 3500 RPM fan on the copper version only dropped the operating temperature by 3 degrees, and in my opinion that's certainly not worth it for the added noise. And just lastly, here is the new and old models compared with the quiet 2800 RPM fan. All things being even on the fan front, the copper model is 3 degrees cooler out of the box and 5 degrees cooler with PBO enabled. So in terms of cooling performance, the new Wraith Spire is very similar to the older model, but as we just saw, in order for AMD to achieve that similar level of performance, they did have to ramp the fan speed up quite a bit, and that of course makes the cooler much noisier. And then when we put the same fan on both heat sinks, tried that, uh, so basically equalized the RPM, the fan performance, we found that the copper cooler was around three to five degrees cooler, depending on the settings. So that's not a massive difference, but I would much rather have the lighter uh, and cooler copper version if I was given the option. I guess the main question you're probably asking at this point is why did AMD make the change in the first place? And well, they made the change for the sort of typical reasons that companies make these sort of changes, and that change was to save money. So I don't know if that was an official response, but they did get back to me saying that it was to reduce costs. Didn't really go into detail or give much more than that, but it seems pretty obvious that this is a cost-saving exercise. Uh, they said though, in their testing and from the feedback they've received, performance is the same, and I guess that's technically true. But of course, as we found, in order to get that same performance, it's louder. But anyway, they've made these changes to reduce manufacturing costs. And although the new solid aluminium version is much heavier, it is surely also much cheaper to produce. So yeah, AMD's logic there makes sense. The increased weight might impact shipping costs, but yeah, AMD obviously did a pricing analysis and found that the trade-off was well worth it. And I don't really know what logistics go into that, but anyway, the reason we have this cooler is because it's cheaper. At the end of the day, they are providing an inferior cooling solution when compared to the original Wraith Spire. So that's really quite disappointing. And I hope we don't see AMD continue to move in this direction in an effort to maximize profits as they become more competitive. For now, it's somewhat of a non-issue as I recommend avoiding the R5-3600X at $250 and instead grab the $200 R5-3600 and then spend $20 to $30 on an aftermarket cooler to improve thermals and lower the operating volume. For those of you who might claim I'm going a bit soft in AMD because we favor AMD or whatever you might come up with, to that I'd say it's pretty unreasonable to really give AMD a hard time about this change, given the cooler still works quite well and it's miles better than what we get from the competition with much more expensive processors. For example, we found last year that the Core i7-8700 isn't just loud and hot with the box cooler, it's also quite a bit slower as it heavily throttles, even in a 21 degree room. So AMD is still some way off screwing us quite badly, but let it be a warning to them, we are paying attention. And that is going to do it for this one. Bit of a different kind of video, probably weren't expecting me to uh, do a head to head comparison between new and old box coolers, but that's what's happened today. And yeah, I, I found it interesting and enjoyed doing it. So hopefully you guys did as well. Of course, we will be back to our more regular type content. I'll have a, a very in-depth investigation in a few days. I won't give away what that's on, but yeah, that's another interesting piece as well. Anyway, if you liked this video, you know what to do. You can also check out our Patreon page where you can request fun videos like this one. And as always, thank you for watching. I'm your host, Steve, and I'll see you again next time. <laughs>